Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christian Life Center Malaysia. If you're tuning in for the very first time for our Sunday service, I want you to know that feel free. This is your home. You are welcome. Praise God. I want to take this time to just appreciate our father and our mother, Dr. Mono and Pastor Tina Mono. Mom and dad, thank you so much for this platform that you have accorded to us as your children. We are so honored and we're so humbled. We honor you, mom and dad, and we appreciate you. Thank you so much to all of you that have logged in from outside of Malaysia. For all of you that have joined in from Christian Life Center, I welcome you. I also just want to take this time to appreciate and acknowledge our man of God here, Pastor D. Pastor Sa, we love you so much. Thank you so much for even according me this opportunity to be able to share the word of God uh, this, this afternoon. Amen. My name is Pastor T, and I'll be sharing the word of God with you today by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Let us just pray. Pray with me wherever you are. Hallelujah. Just lift up your holy hands and just speak into the atmosphere. Speak into your life. Declare that the word of God today will bring change. That the word of God will bring transformation in your life. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We glorify your name. We thank you, mighty God, for this time. Father, your word declares that the word of God is alive. The word of God is effective. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. So, Father God, we declare and we decree that as the word of God is being ministered today, that, Father God, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that indeed you alone is God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I am so excited. I am so excited. We are counting down to our 2021 conference, the Experience Conference. Praise God. If you haven't heard about it, you are hearing it for the first time. Our conference will be running from the 27th of this month to the 3rd of October. Make sure you make a date. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, in this world, we operate by two systems. Hallelujah. In this world, we operate by two systems. Praise God. We operate by two sets of laws. Hallelujah. When we talk about systems, you know, these are, they are set principles. They are a way in which things are done. Praise God. It's a methodology. You know, it's, it's, it's a procedure, an approach to the way things are done. Hallelujah. And when we talk about these two systems, we've got the natural system which the governments of this world operate by, which you and I operate by. You know, they'll tell you that you have to have a driver's license before you get on the road. They'll tell you that you have to, you know, to, to get a degree before you get a certain job. Hallelujah. And there's also what is called, you know, the, 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 the divine, the divine uh, system, the divine law. Hallelujah. The spiritual law. Praise God. And this is a law that will override any other law that is written. This is a system that operates in the kingdom of God only. Praise the Lord. And for you and I to be able to enjoy this season, this is our season of sowing. There are certain rules. There are certain laws. There are certain methodologies. There are certain principles, spiritual principles, that we need to abide by. Hallelujah. There are certain things that we need to say. There are certain things that we need to do. The spiritual law is much more effective than any other law that has been placed under the face of the earth. And it has the ability to override anything else that has been spoken over your life. Praise God. So for you to succeed in this kingdom, for you to be a champion in this kingdom, for you to move from failure to success in this kingdom, you need to apply these spiritual laws faithfully. Praise God. Faithfully and diligently and consistently. Hallelujah. Anything that you are doing outside of the spiritual law is a waste of time. Anything that you are putting your might, that you are putting your energy you know, in outside of the spiritual principles that God has placed for us in his word is a waste of time. Praise God. So we need to realize that we operate first in the spirit realm. We are spirit first before anything else. Hallelujah. God has put in motion spiritual laws for a reason, which, which are here to govern us, to govern our lives. And one of these laws that I want to speak to us about today is the law of sowing and reaping. Praise God. The law of sowing and reaping. Remember, I say that we are governed by laws. 
We are governed by systems. You know, systems that allow us to live life in, you know, on this earth and to be successful on this earth. Praise God. So today I want us to dive into and talk more about sowing and reaping. That is a law. That is a system. That is a principle of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. If you turn with me to Genesis chapter 2 verse 22. Genesis chapter 2, chapter 8 verse 22. The word of the Lord declares, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Hallelujah. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Praise God. Point number one, I want you to know that as you operate in this law of sowing and reaping, I want you to know that your harvest is guaranteed when you sow. Point number one, your harvest is guaranteed when you sow. Hallelujah. Our man of God, Pastor D, has taken time to ground us in this word, to show us the spiritual laws and principles of what we need to do to see success on this earth. Many times we want to honor and abide by the natural laws alone, and we expect that they will yield the harvest for us. It is good to honor the laws that the governments have set for you, but make sure that you are putting you know, your attention to the spiritual principles. Make sure that you're putting attention to the commandments of the Lord. Hallelujah. Genesis 8.22 declares that while seed... While this earth remains, seed time and harvest shall never cease. As long as you are on this earth, as long as you are planting, as long as you are sowing, there is a harvest. As long as this earth exists, hallelujah, as long as there is sunrise and sunset, I want you to know that harvest time is a, is a guarantee. Praise God. You can't harvest without putting seed in the ground. Pastor D talked about this last week. The man of God said that we cannot harvest where we have not sown seed. Hallelujah. No matter what, that is the law. No matter what gimmicks you may try, if you do not abide by the, the, the system, the law of planting, you will not get a harvest. Hallelujah. You can't have faith without hearing the word of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse, verse 17 that faith comes by hearing. It's only by hearing the word of God that you have faith. It's only by, you know, spending time, by sowing time in the word that you develop faith. So you see how these laws work. If you don't sow in the word, if you don't spend time in the word, you will not have faith. That is what the Bible is saying. Another law that has been written for us, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. The word, I'll, I'll just read part B. The Bible says, everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Hallelujah. You can't have love if you are not in Christ. You can't have Christ if you are not born again in Christ. Praise God. Because that is a law that has been set to say that everyone who loves has been born of God. So for you and I to say we love, we must be born of God. We must be in Christ. Hallelujah. God is not man that he should lie. Whatever he has set for us in the word of God, every principle that he has set for us in the word of God is, is, is for us to do. Amen. And there is a harvest when you do the word. These are systems. These are laws. Hallelujah. It's either you are a law-abiding citizen or you are a rebel. Amen. It's either you honor the word of God or you don't honor the word of God. It's either you honor your man of God or you don't honor your man of God. It's either you honor your parents or you don't honor your parents. Hallelujah. Praise God. There are systems and laws that have been put in place. Why? So that we may have order. Why? So that we may understand how these principles work. So that we may be able to be fruitful here on earth. Praise God. Even in the systems of the world, there are laws. If you do not do this, you, you know, this will happen to you. If you do not do this, you'll be thrown into, you know, into prison. If you do not do this, you know, you will lose your property. Hallelujah. Laws that have been put in the, in the world, in the natural system. So it's either you are abiding or you are not abiding. So choose to be, a, a, you know, a law-abiding citizen than a rebel. Amen. Your harvest is guaranteed when you sow. I want you to know, don't look at that seed. 
Don't look at that seed and tell yourself, but this is the only, this is the only thing I have in my hands. God is saying that if only you could put it down in the ground, you will see what I will do in your life. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 28 to 29, the Bible says, And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it. Amen. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on this earth. Wow. What a mighty God. The first thing we see God that, you know, that, you know, which God did for you and I. The Bible says that when he created us, when he created us in his image, when he created us in his likeness, the first thing that he did was to do what was to bless us. Amen. The first thing he did for you and I was to speak a blessing over our lives. The Bible says he blessed him. I want you to know that you are blessed. God empowered us to prosper from the very beginning. Praise God. So you are not fighting to be blessed. I want you to know that God has already empowered you to prosper and to excel in life. Praise God. God's plan for you from the very beginning is that you may live a prosperous life here on earth. It is your right in Christ. The man of God took us a series of our rights in Christ. It is our right in Christ that we increase, children of God. It is your right in Christ that you, you multiply wherever you are. It is your right in Christ that you flourish. It is your right in, you know, in Christ that you are fruitful in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When we talk about fruitfulness, you know, it's being conducive to produce in abundance. I want you to know that your life is conducive to produce not just little but in abundance. Hallelujah. God has empowered you to be a blessing. God has empowered you for success. So don't look down upon yourself, brother. Don't look down upon yourself, sister. I want you to know that God has already blessed you. You are walking on this face of the earth as a blessed man. Hallelujah. Not only did he empower us to succeed, praise God, but he also gave us a formula. He gave us an ingredient Amen. On how to maintain this blessing. How to sustain the blessing. Do you realize that this blessing needs to be sustained? That this blessing, you know, it needs to remain. The blessing of the Lord must make you rich. It must never add sorrow. Hallelujah. So he gave us an, an ingredient. God gave you and I a formula. And I want to draw your attention to the word of God we just read in verse, verse 29. Genesis chapter 1 verse 29, and God said, after he blessed you, he said that, behold, I give you every plant yielding seed. Praise God. I have provided all kinds of grain. I have provided all kinds of seed. Praise God. Not only did he empower you to succeed, but he also gave you this formula. He gave you a seed. Amen. That if you keep reproducing this seed, your, your blessings will never run dry. If you keep putting this seed into the ground, your blessing will never run dry. God gave man, God gave you and I something. Something to sustain us here on earth. That we must not be beggars here on earth. Hallelujah. To make sure that you keep increasing. To make sure that you and I keep multiplying. To make sure that you and I keep being fruitful. Hallelujah. God gave you an eye seed. Praise the Lord. Where is your seed today? Which ground is your seed in? God has given you the ability to determine the outcome of your life. He has given you the ability to determine the outcome of your life by what you do with your seed. Praise God. What is it that you're doing with your seed today? I want to ask you a question today. What is it that you are doing with the seed God has given you? And I'm not just talking about finances. We heard pastor has been teaching us how that your talent can be your seed. Your time can be seed. The word is seed. What are you doing with your seed? I want you to realize that it is that seed that will sustain, you know, that will determine the outcome of your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are to be sustained by the seed that you sow. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, the Bible says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. Hmm. 
If you sow evil, you will be sustained by evil fruit. Oh, that is not the will of God. Hallelujah. That is not the will of God for our lives. So whatever it is that you sow, when you sow love, guess what? You will reap love. When you sow money, guess what? You will reap money. Hallelujah. When you sow kindness, when you sow favor, when you bless someone, you will reap those things. Praise God. Forgiveness is a seed. When you sow forgiveness, you will be forgiven by, by, by your friend. You will be forgiven by that person that you may have wronged. The blessing, you know, of giving, the blessing of giving, the blessing of sowing empowers you to succeed in life. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10, the Bible says, Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. May he who supplies seed to the sower. God is the supplier of that seed. Amen. But that seed will only be directed to the one who sows. Amen. That seed will only be, you know, given to the one who sows. God supplies seed and he also supplies bread. I have enjoyed this series as Pastor D has been teaching us how there's a difference between the poor and the rich. Praise God. We need to understand that seed is for putting back in the ground. That talent is for you to put back in the ground. Your talent is not to bring glory to you. Your talent is not to make you puffed up. But your talent is to put back in the ground. Is to sow it back into the house of the Lord. A man becomes poor because he does not put seed to the ground. Hallelujah. And the rich become richer by sowing the seed that God has given them. God supplies to those who sow. So I want to encourage you today to say, be a sower. Be a sower of everything that God has given you. You will never run out of seed, I can assure you. You will never run out of supplies in your home when you are a sower. Be a person who is always in search for a place to sow. Sow in your friend's life. Sow in your ministry. Sow in your families. Some of you may be working. Sow in your parents' lives while you have the chance. Hallelujah. Be a blessing to your parents. Don't let your parents cry. Don't let your parents go without food. Praise God. Call your parents up. Check on them. Sow love in their lives. Praise the Lord. Take the time to think of them. Take the time to sow prayer for them. Hallelujah. The Bible says, honor your father and mother so that you may be able to live long. You may all may, may be able to go well with you. I want to encourage you to be a sower. Amen. Do not tire. Do not get weary of doing good. Praise God. Because it's only a matter of time that you will be enjoying your harvest. Hallelujah. Look for someone to sow into. Amen. You may have people around you that are struggling with certain things. You may see a brother or sister struggling. Whatever it is to buy a, a, a loaf of bread. To cover their rent. Struggling with, you know, with, with mental issues with emotions, sow in their lives. Sow your time in their lives. Be an encouragement to someone. Don't live your life for yourself. Praise the Lord. That is not the will of God. The Bible says, you know, that Abraham was blessed and he was called a blessing. Why? Because this man constantly blessed others. He constantly thought of others around him. And so that blessing was sustained because he was a blessing. Hallelujah. Point number two. A seed today is a harvest for your generation. A seed today is a harvest for your generation. Amen. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 22. We'll pick it from 13. I'll pick a few scriptures from there. Amen. Genesis chapter 22 verse 13. A seed today is a harvest for your generation. Abraham looked up and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught up in its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son Isaac. Hallelujah. 14. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to the day it is said, and to this day it is said, on this mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. 15. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time. 
and said, I swear by myself, this is the angel swearing by himself, declares the Lord that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. Hallelujah. I want you to know that you are a descendant of Abraham. And the scripture here is saying, because of his obedience, because he had dared to, 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 you know, to believe the word of God, he had dared to say, I will sacrifice my only son. I will sacrifice him for the sake of the gospel. Because he had dared, he had, you know, he had this faith. This unstaggering faith, this trust in God, that he was able to overlook all the natural laws. He was able to overlook his feelings, his emotions, and he told himself, I will do it for Christ. I will do it for the kingdom. I will sow my son because God has asked me to do so. And we hear the Bible saying because of that, that he was blessed. Because of that, his descendants were blessed. Praise God. Abraham was ready to sacrifice his son. God provided seed through the ram because of the faithfulness of Abraham. I want you to know that in that difficult time, God will provide that seed. Don't look at what you've got. Don't let that thing compel you not to give because you feel once you put it in the ground, you have nothing left. The same way that God was able to provide a ram for Abraham, I want you to know that he will do the same for you today. I want you to know that whatever it is that you desire, just put it to the ground. Hallelujah. Remember that the seed will produce after its own kind. So when you put to the ground time, when you put to the ground finances, that is what it will reproduce for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we see this Isaac, a descendant of Abraham. We see how his life, how the course of his life, how his future was such a blessing and a testimony. It was a marvel. Not only because he loved God, but also because of what his father did. What are the things that you are doing today for your generation? What are the seeds that you are planting today for your generation? And I want to talk to the people with, with biological children right now. I want to talk to you concerning your children. To say what seed are you putting in the ground for your children? What seed are you putting down in the ground for your daughter's future? Hallelujah. Abraham, you know, went against all, all laws and he said, I will do it because God has told me to do it. Isaac, Genesis chapter 26, verse 12. Isaac planted crop in the land and the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The blessing came from his father. The blessing was already spoken on his life. The blessing of the Lord over his life was already there through the father's obedience hallelujah god sees your heart the same way that he saw the heart of abraham i want you to know today that god sees your heart as you are watching me today whatever it is that you're trusting god for i want you to know that god sees your heart what is the heart what is the condition of your heart today regarding that seed hallelujah your sowing starts from your heart Amen. Don't be a talker, too much of a talker without action. Be, when you talk, make sure you're speaking from your heart. Because it's out of the abundance of your heart that your mouth will declare and it will speak forth things. So when you condition your heart to be a sower, by the time your mouth is speaking, it's just agreeing with, with what the heart is saying. Hallelujah. So Abraham conditioned in his heart to give. God provided seed for him through that ram. Abraham had told himself, I will sow no matter the cost. What are you willing to sell for the sake of God? What are you willing to let go for the sake of the gospel? What are you willing to sow for the sake of the gospel? Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord was upon Isaac. Not only in, because of the things that he did, but because of his father. Hallelujah. Abraham listened to God. Abraham obeyed God. Abraham was constantly obeying God's commandments. And we see how we are partakers of that blessing because he was a man of honor. He was a man who honored the word of God. He said he would bless him because his father Abraham was already blessed by God. What are you doing today to ensure that there's an inheritance for your generation? 
This is a question you need to ask yourself. I remember one of the sermons Pastor, Pastor D talked about time. How that this could be our last opportunity. Because time is going, we are running out of time, we are coming to the end times. What is it that you're going to make up your mind today and say, I will do this in the kingdom of God. I will sow in my life. I will sow in my family. Pastor D talked about spending time with our family, sowing in our family. You may say, my family is too far away. Well, you can contact them. You can send them a WhatsApp. You can check up on them. Invest time in your family. Hallelujah. A blessing is an empowerment to succeed. So sowing empowers not only you to succeed, but for your generation to succeed as well. Amen. Sowing today, you know, it creates legacy. It creates inheritance. The Bible says that a wise man leaves an inheritance not for his children, but for his children's children. Praise the Lord. We need to be able to activate these principles in our lives. Activate this principle of sowing and your generation will enjoy reaping. Your, your generation will enjoy a harvest. So it doesn't matter where you are today. It doesn't matter what you have today. A blessing does not depend on your location. It does not depend which country you are living in. You see, that is the faithfulness of God. When we talk about systems, the systems of the world, the natural systems will tell you that you have to be in a first world country for you to succeed. The natural systems will tell you that you have to speak in such a way, you have to look a certain way for you to get a job like this. There's a certain criteria that the world imposes on us. But I'm talking about activating the spiritual principles over your life. The ones that don't care about your geographical locations. The ones that don't care whether you went to school or not. The ones that don't care whether you were orphaned at the age of two or not. Hallelujah. I'm talking about these principles that will overrule and overthrow anything that does not align with the word of God. These are the principles that we need to activate over our lives. Some people waste time reading, their, reading stars, you know, trying to understand how the stars align, thinking that's how they will succeed. There are people who won't start a day before they read their star sign. What is my star sign saying? Oh, today it's saying that I will meet a guy. So now their attention is on seeing a guy on the road. Their attention is just focusing on where they can meet this guy. Hallelujah. Don't waste time on things that do not benefit your, your generation. Don't waste time on things that do not, you know, make you fruitful in life. Hallelujah. People consult all kinds of people, astrologers, people who study, you know, the movement of the earth, the movement of the sun, the movement of the planets. So these are, prof you know, they will, they will, they've mastered how the galaxy works. And they will use that to base their interpretation on how your life is going to go. They will use their findings, their natural findings, because they are, they are men. And they will use that and interpret it for you and for your future. That steals away time of you even spending time with God. Because you feel you've got this formula that you have been given by someone who has, who has studied the stars, by someone who has studied a planet. How is a planet... How does a planet align your future? How does it is God who has aligned that planet? It is God who aligns your life. Praise God. So people who spend time in all these things, basing their lives on how the earth is moving, on how the stars are moving. That is a waste of time. Hallelujah. You cannot interpret a life of God through the physical arrangements of this earth. That is a waste of our time, children of God. We cannot spend time by these magazines which will show us, you know, reading from those glass bubbles, how your life will go. No, 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 no. Those things cannot be. You, know, you cannot get your answer. You cannot get your, your, you know, your, your solution from focusing on these things. Hallelujah. So your environment should not determine what happens to you. Your environment, your location should not be the one to determine whether you succeed or not. Many people will tell you, oh, I'm in this land. And in this land, I cannot, you know, speak the gospel. In this land, I cannot do this, so I will not go to church. In this land, no, 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 no. 
Hallelujah. In your home you can praise the Lord. In the home you can speak in tongues. In your home you can, you know, you can win a soul from your home. Hallelujah. So do not constantly abide by these natural systems that have been set for you and make those law over your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. There is a portion that you and I need to do. Abraham was blessed and called a blessing. I want you to know, even though he was already blessed, even though he was called a blessing, there's a part he had to do. So you and I have got a portion that we need to do. We need to be a blessing. Amen. To sustain that blessing, to make sure that your generation is sustained with that wealth. I want you to know that you need to be a blessing. Many times we have heard how that the breadwinner may have passed away and the story changed. The children suffered because the breadwinner the bread had passed away. Hallelujah. We lost, we lost our father when we were very young. I was very young. My older siblings, my younger siblings, we were all very young when we lost our father. Our father passed away over 20 years ago. And I remember as a child how our father was able to give us everything that we desired. How our father was able to give us, you know, to, to, to send us everywhere we wanted to go. How our father would tell us to write down a list of the things that we want after going window shopping. And he would give us money to go and buy those things. How he was able to provide all things at all times. But a time came when he had to answer the call. And it is then that I noticed a different switch, a different kind of life. Hallelujah. It was our mother and us. And our mother did her best. Our mother, you know, fought for us to be in school. Our mother struggled for us to be in school. But she did it anyway. She succeeded at it anyway because she had God. Hallelujah. What is it that you have today that will sustain your blessing if that job has been taken away? What is it? Do you have Christ in you? Hallelujah. What is it that is going to keep you going? What is it like my mother that will keep you standing? Even when you don't have a roof over your head for your children. What is it that is going to make you stand even if you don't have bread for your children? Hallelujah. I thank God for my life. I stand here because I'm a living testimony of the word of God. Of a woman who constantly stayed in the word for the sake of her children who are following her behind. Hallelujah. So make sure today that you are planting, that you are sowing for your future. You are sowing for your family. You are sowing for the generations to come. Praise the Lord. Isaac sowed in a land of famine. Hallelujah. Isaac, the Bible says that Isaac sowed in a land of famine. And he experienced greatness. So we are saying that it's not about where you are. It's not about where God has placed you this very time you're listening to me. I want you to know that you need to take a hold of the word of God. And you need to apply the word of God in your life. Amen. It is in that difficult time that the ground is fertile. We hear how that in the famine Isaac sowed and he ripped a hundredfold. I want you to know that it is in this pandemic, it is in this ground that it, your time, your season of fertility is here. Your harvest is here. This ground is fertile. I have heard so many testimonies. How many people have started businesses, myself, and my husband being included in the time of the pandemic, a business which is flourishing. I want you to know that you ca it can happen for you. I want you to know that the things that you are hearing people testify is evidence that God is at work. And if God can do it for them, he can surely do it for you. Because God is not man. He's not, he does not look at your history. He does not look at your past when he wants to bless you. Hallelujah. So there are cases people will think you have lost your mind when you are sowing, but you do not, you know, they, they, they don't see where your next meal is going to come from, but they see you sowing. They don't see something changing in your life. Some of you have been trusting God for so many things for many years. It could be a child. You have been trusting the Lord for the fruit of the womb. As a couple, you are trusting the Lord for finances. And people may be laughing at you. Seven years down the line, there's no baby in the home. And people may be laughing at you because you are faithfully going to the house of the Lord. Because you are faithfully in a Bible study. Your home is a gateway to heaven. Your home is constantly a place for people to fellowship. And people may be laughing at you. 
They are laughing at you because they do not understand how the systems of the spirit work. You have an understanding because you know that in Christ, it's not about what, where I am today, but it's about where I'm going. It's about what he has already done for me. And all I need to do is step into it by my faith. All I need to do is step into it by my sowing. Hallelujah. So I want you to know that even as people may be mocking you, mocking your family, mocking your, you know, your job, your business, your situation. Oh, I want you to know that this is the most fertile time for you to sow. This is the most fertile time for you to sow and indeed you enjoy a harvest. I want you to know that seed produces after its kind. What is it that you want today? Sow it and you will reap it. Hallelujah. Sow it and you will see a harvest. You want to get married, sister, brother? Sow in that friend's wedding. Don't be one when you hear a wedding being announced, you, 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 you know, you, you look the other way. Or you start to criticize how their marriage won't even last. How these people are not serious. How, come, how can they get married? They don't even have a job. So in their life. Hallelujah. I remember a time before I got married. Uh, we would always, you know, whenever we would hear a, a wedding being, you know, announced in the church. Oh, we would be so excited. We would do our best to sow. It may not have been money all the time, but we'll give our, of ourselves to sow in their lives. We'll give our time, whatever it is that they needed, we'll be there to sow in their lives. Hallelujah. And as we did that, I believe, you know, that the marriage that I'm enjoying today is because of some of those seeds that I sowed in other people's marriages. So I want you to know that seed produces after its kind. Amen. You want good friendships, be a good friend. Amen. Be a reliable friend. Be a reliable sister. Be a reliable brother. You want your children, you know, to honor you. Honor your father and mother. Hallelujah. Because your seed will produce after its kind. Amen. Point number three. Be a faithful giver. Be a faithful giver. Hallelujah. Be a faithful giver. Amen. Acts chapter 5. From verse 1, now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold the piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part, part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Ananias and Sapphira lied regarding the money that they had, you know, they had sold property. Amen. And they were put to death. You know, when we read about this story, the, you know, in Acts, we see the beginning of the church. You know, how that as the church was beginning, there were many needs. There were many requirements. As the church was growing, as the church was spreading, you know, finances were needed. They were needed more people to feed. With that came many responsibilities and needs. So the believers we just read for in chapter 4 were compelled to share their possessions by selling them and taking the proceeds to be a blessing. They were united in heart, they were united in mind to make sure that none of them among themselves went to bed hungry. Because of this, there were, there were no needy people. That's what the Bible says. That because of this, there were no needy people. Amen. They were faithful with their giving. Your giving eradicates poverty. Amen. But then we also see how Ananias and Sapphira decided to keep a portion, decided to keep seed and eat seed. Amen. And there were consequences. I want you to know that when you do not give that which is supposed to be given, when you do not sow that which is supposed to be sown, there's consequences. Hallelujah. So be a faithful giver. Be a faithful sower. Hallelujah. The Bible in Proverbs 11:25 says, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. As you refresh others, as you are a blessing, like the people, you know, in these times in Acts, in the beginning of the churches, as they were a blessing to others, people, you know, people will bless you too. Praise God. Seed will only multiply when it is sown. Amen. Seed will only multiply when it is sown. The Bible says, give and it shall be given back to you. Not only, you know, will it be given back to you in the same measure, but a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, it shall be added to you. Hallelujah. So when you seed, when you plant, know 
when you plant faithfully, know that you, 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 your seed will multiply. Amen. You will never live in lack. You will never struggle in life. Amen. Yes, you may be waiting for God to open a door for you. But I want you to declare to yourself that you are rich. You may not see that job opportunity opening up. You declare to yourself that I am blessed of the Lord. You declare to yourself that I am empowered. Amen. That is the activating the spiritual principles and the spiritual laws over your life. Praise God. It is your faith. Whether or not you see it. You don't only believe when you see. Jesus said, hey, you people only believe when you see. Hallelujah. You see with your spiritual eyes. So you receive with your spiritual understanding. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Everything God created in the beginning began with the seed of the word. Amen. It become it, everything. You know, God deals with seed. He is saying that give and it will be given back to you. Do something and something will happen to you. The creation itself began with the seed of the word. God spoke. So you don't multiply when you withhold. Amen. You don't be quiet when it's time to pray and expect to reap. Hallelujah. God spoke. So why don't you speak when it's time to pray? Hallelujah. Why don't you speak the word when it's time to speak the word, child of God? If God was able to speak the word, I mean, we should be able to do that. Amen. The systems of God, spiritual systems, respond to seed. Amen. Oh, many times people will bless you. People will bless you. People will bless you. Enough is enough where you say, I'm, all, I'm always the one saying thank you. Why don't you, give, why don't you give someone reason to say thank you? Hallelujah. Give someone reason to appreciate the blessing that you are in their lives. Don't always be ready with arms open to receive daily. Tell yourself, what is it that I can give? What is it that I can do to get someone to say thank you? Praise God. God will bless you when you are a blessing. When you give, you connect to the economy of heaven. Hallelujah. When you give, there's an economy here on earth and there's an economy in heaven. Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 17 verse 7. The widow at Zarephath. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about how Elijah had been instructed to go to meet a widow. The Bible says that a widow had already been prepared. He was told that I've already prepared a widow that you will find. Hallelujah. And the widow will assist you. If God operated under the laws of the world, he would have prepared a rich man to bless Elijah. Hallelujah. But that is not God, you know. God operates, you know, God's, God's things may not make sense in the natural mind. In a carnal mind, they will not make sense. God used a widow. Who did Lower. When things are, when, when you look around and you do not have and you get people phoning you for help, when you yourself feel like you need to be encouraged, people are bombarding you with prayer requests. That is how God works because he knows that he has already empowered you to be a blessing. Hallelujah. So I want, us to, I want to encourage someone today that there are laws that you need to activate in your life. We need to be able to activate the law of, of planting. The law of putting seed to the ground so that you may be able to enjoy the fruits of this season. Hallelujah. We are in a year of experiencing God's faithfulness. I want you to know that God is faithful to his word. Well, that which he has said in his word will come to pass. But there is something that you and I need to do. We need to be faithful. We need to stay faithful. Hallelujah. As the conference will be coming up, I want you to make up your mind. To say that I will be faithful to be in this conference. Because I believe it is through this conference that God will empower me with some spiritual principles to take me to the next level in my life. Praise the name of the living God. Wherever you are today, I hope you have been blessed by the word. And I hope that you put this principle. 
to be able to activate it in your life, to activate the law of planting, the law of sowing, and the law of reaping. Hallelujah. Because it works together. So make up your mind today to be a sower. Make up your mind today to be a giver. Be encouraged. Be determined in your heart that you will give no matter what, like Abraham did with his son. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord you know, cause the blessing that he has already put upon your life be made manifest in your physical world in the name of Jesus. And as you sow, as you plant, I pray that indeed you will enjoy a harvest in your life. The Bible says that God is not unjust, that he should let your good deed go unnoticed. Mm -hmm. So I want you to know that whatever good deed, whatever good seed that you sow, it will not go unnoticed in Jesus' mighty name. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you want to be a partaker of these blessings, or if you are living a life that you feel, you know, is not aligned, is not in line with this, with this law of activating the law of giving and the law of reaping, I want you to just pray with me today. Amen. I want you to connect your faith. Let's connect our faith. And we're going to stand, you know, on the word of God and believe and trust God that indeed you receive him and that your life will never be the same again and that you have the ability to live a righteous life, that you will not compromise the gospel for anything. You will not compromise the gospel for money. You will not compromise your, your, the gospel for friendships in Jesus' mighty name. Just lift up your hands wherever you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those hands that are lifted up, for those hearts, Father God, that are willing to sow, that are willing to give. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that by the confession that indeed uh, Jesus Christ died and rose again and that he is Christ and Lord over them, I pray, Father God, that may you alone do a new thing in their life in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray, Father God, that each one of your children will be able to withstand their enemy's schemes in these end times in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Please, please stick around. We're going to have our church announcements, amen. I just want to appreciate you all for being a part of our service this afternoon, this morning, wherever you're watching from. And I pray that indeed God will bless you and God will help you, you know, to be able to be a sower in everything in your life, in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, amen.